Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited because I have my sister here. You guys might have already know who she is and if you don't, you're about to get to know her. This is Miss Traveling Sister. Hello, thank you so much for having me on your of channel. Course. How are you honor. feeling? I feel great, I just ate so, you know, I'm, I'm good, you know. I'm great though, thank you. Great, thank you so much for coming on here. So the reason why I brought you on here is because a lot of people have been wanting to know people who are diasporas that have come in here to Tanzania mm -hmm. and to learn more about your story. So when did you first come out here? I first got here December 11th, 2016. Wow. So almost five years, December will be five years. And what was your first impression? Honestly, when I first got, when I first got off of the plane, and I'm riding down the street in the in the car. I just felt relaxed. Like I, I was, I felt, I didn't feel like this is home, but I felt a sense of familiarity. And it was, it was strange, but not in a bad way. It was like, dang, why do I feel so familiar with this place? Mm -hmm. And at the time it wasn't like I had watched a bunch of YouTube videos because there was literally nothing about Tanzania on YouTube except the Serengeti, Mount Kilimanjaro, and Zanzibar. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so it wasn't a lot of YouTubers out here to show, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I just felt really at peace mm -hmm. and comfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And who did you come out here with? At first, I came out here with one of my homegirls mm -hmm. who we were really close, and um, I told her I was moving, that I wanted to move outside of the country. And she said, like, you know, girl, I'm tired of America. I'm, I've been thinking the same thing. And I was like, so let's do this together. One right. plus one is two. You know, so initially we came out here together, but we ended up splitting ways because we just weren't seeing eye to eye on mm -hmm. certain things. And I honestly don't feel like it was in the cards, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. for our journey to be together. Mm -hmm. So, you know, no love lost. It's just what it is, what it, what it, it, it is, is what, what it was. is. And it was <laughs> what it was, you feel me? So, you know, we just ended up splitting ways. But um, yeah, I came out here with her first. When you came mm -hmm. out here, did you have the, um, mindset of I'm gonna stay here I'm gonna visit I'm staying so you knew <laughs> yeah I'm staying here mm -hmm. this is what it is I, this this is home yeah like I straight I was like I bought that one-way ticket y'all I was like I'm relocating yeah even though I've never been here I'm relocating. I'm relocating and I was literally thinking about that like it was either last night or yesterday and I was like yo I really did just up and move like, yeah, move away from all of my family, all of my <laughs> friends back home. Like, and you know, it wasn't, it really wasn't a surprise to me when I did it, and it wasn't a surprise to like my friends, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't surprise myself because I just, this is just how I am, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I just, if I want to do something, I do it. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I, I falter in other areas in life, but when I say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it, yeah. you know? Um, but like, so I just, I was just thinking, like, yo, you really made that move mm -hmm. and you really made that decision and I really feel like when you tell yourself I'm gonna make this work and this is what I'm going to do it will happen for you exactly. when you start to second guess yourself and you start to oh but you know I have this obstacle and I have this and I have that that's when things start to fail but you knew like this is this is where I'm relocating yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. how has your life changed since when you were in America versus now here well and how have you changed Okay, that's such a, it's such a um, dynamic question that requires a dynamic answer. So it's like, okay, on the topical level, my life has changed exponentially. Like, you know, I got married, I have a baby. Well, she's not even a baby anymore, a, a full a toddler, three going <laughs> on 30. And, you know, um, just, I'm a lot more settled. For, for, for those who have known me in my past life, you know, pre-Tanzania, pre y'all know I was turn up queen, turn up. okay? <laughs> for real, you know, it was, um, it was very different. Like, I'm, I'm a completely different mm -hmm. person, to be honest. Um, not at a core level, because, you know, Kat is still Kat. Mm -hmm. Kathy is still Kathy, you yeah. know? Yeah. But, um, you know, it's, I, I've grown, I've matured mm -hmm. a lot more. Yeah. I've become more confident in who I am. Yes. You know, um, yes. like, because honestly, you know, not to just dive in super deep, but I was dealing with a lot of issues back in the States, you know.
know, um, you're constantly bombarded with this is how you should look, this is how you should act, this is how you should think. Mm. If you don't fall in line, then you're off code. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Then you're, you know, you're, you're put in so many boxes. And it's not, you know what I'm saying? I feel like back in the day when our parents were growing up, you know, the boomers and stuff, they were put in one box and yeah. expected to act a certain way. Yeah. But us, millennials, like we're put in so many different boxes and we're almost forced to be accepting of this mm -hmm. because it's on trend, dressing like this thinking like this, um, you know, having certain belief systems, eating like this, mm -hmm. believing in this, you know Gotta what I'm saying? Gotta do this this way. And when you don't meet those expectations. Right, like, it's, it's so you different. You fall into those traps. And, you know, even just the cycle of, you know, you have to work to pay bills. You know what I'm that saying? That whole rat race. That whole rat race. So how was it to get out of that rat race? Damn, it's freeing. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I quit my job. All Like, me and my husband, we've been building our business. We've been, we've had multiple di different things that we've tried mm -hmm. out. You know what I'm saying? Some stuck, some didn't. But we are finally, you know what I'm saying? We're building our own business, have our own income stream coming in. It's nothing more liberating than being your own boss. For real. And I Why like, don't you tell them a little bit about your business? Okay, so um, as of right now, we are in the timber business. Um, for those of you who watch my channel, you might have a little background knowledge of this, but my husband grew up in the timber industry. Um, his father, you know, grew all the kids up, all what, seven, eight? Oh no, I love y'all. If y'all watch it, I love y'all. I'm not trying to forget none of y'all, but it's a lot of kids. Grew all of them up in the timber, um, timber business. 30 plus years and so um, a little backstory about how we got into it um, Freddie he went to school for education with a focus in history and in wildlife so um, with that he was a teacher for a while and then we started our own safari company but that was right right pre-covid and as soon as covid came like psh, you know it just shut everything down and we were like well we got to make money in the meantime so going back to what he knows and what he loves and what he's very good at and what I've grown to know and love. I've never in a million years thought that I would be like dealing with wood, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, so it, it, it's so fun and so interesting. But, um, you know, we do wholesale, retail supply of exotic hardwood timber. We even make furniture. Um, anything that you, like lighting, accessories, doors, like anything dealing with wood, basically we do any and everything. And you ship internationally. Yes. We so ship if you are in the US, you don't need to be here in Tanzania to get their wood. You can be international and it can be shipped to you. Yep. Yep. And each piece is uniquely made, which mm -hmm. I think is so nice. Instead of going to like IKEA where everything looks the same, yes. you go into somebody else's house and it's all the same. You know, Absolutely. you get like this unique piece. And I, I, I love that. I absolutely love you guys. So how did you meet your husband and how did that happen for you? Did you know him? I mean, I know the answer to this, but y'all. Did you know him before? Did you meet him out here? Were you, when you came out here, were you looking for a man? Like, how did this happen for you? Okay, I'll tell you. All right. So a little backstory. When I first came out here or when I was planning to come out here, I had just got done just fresh with like a pretty bad breakup so i was just like nope this is time to heal i'm yeah. not looking for anything i'm just trying to explore africa mm -hmm. you know and explore myself and really just be at peace and adjust to having a new lifestyle and everything so i wasn't even my mom wasn't even focused on a man mm -hmm. so as i said before i came out with my friend and um she was kind of the liaison between people here and us back in the States because I had to pack up like my whole place. I had to rehome my dog, sell my car. And in the middle of this whole transition, my grandfather, who was really like a father to me, passed away. So I had to get back to Virginia and, you know, do everything with that and, you know, his funeral and take care of the family and stuff. So um, I just had a lot on my plate. So she was the liaison between people. And, um, Fast forward to us meeting up in New York, because she's originally from New York, and um, you know we actually got together and we were talking to him on the phone and stuff. And so I was like, "Hey, take my number, because I want I have some other questions I want to ask you. You know, just about like the internet, phone, you know, basic stuff." And this is Freddie. Yeah, this is okay. Freddie, by the way, my husband. Um, so she had found his number on Couchsurfing. If you guys know what couch surfing oh. is, yeah, he had just posted. First of all, 
funny story about that, like his friend convinced him to make a couch surfing thing so that he can get people to take safaris. You know what I'm saying? Because nice. his friend like had a safari company. And so he was like, man, you need to go on couch surfing. A lot of people like post on there or whatever. And so Freddie had just made a couch surfing thing that day or like the day before. Wow. Yeah, and okay, Freddie God. is the first person who hit, I mean, the other girl was, was the, the first, first person, person to hit, hit Freddie Freddy up. up. And then he was like, after that, cause he felt weird about just like having himself like out there like that. Yeah. So he just like shut it down. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, she got his number off of couch surfing. And then um, I took his number and he was like, yeah, I do uh, this, I do that mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. Here's my Instagram so you can see some pictures of like the, safari. the safaris and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And so I'm scrolling through, I'm like, oh, he kind of cute. Oh, okay. but let me distance that because I'm not, my mind still right. wasn't there, you know what I'm saying? So fast forward to us flying out here. Um, we actually had another friend pick us up from the airport and we went to Zanzibar, spent like a, almost a month in Zanzibar. And then that's when her and I ended up splitting ways. And I came back to mainland Tanzania, I came back to Dar. And so um, I was staying in like a hotel for almost two weeks and I was like, this is kind of getting expensive. So let me hit that Freddie dude up and see if he knows like any places to rent. Right. And so he said he did. And tomorrow he's going to come pick me up at the ferry. So, um, you know, we can go to Keegan Boney because that's where he was living at the time. We can go to Keegan Boney and see these places. And then he called me back like 10 minutes later. He was like, hey, so I'm staying in Keegan Boney with my brother and his family. We have four bedrooms. If you um, feel comfortable, because we have an extra bedroom with no one in it, then you can come stay with us instead of spending your money on a hotel, just chipping for some food, and that's it. And I was like, you know what? Why, Why not? not? This is an adventure. So that's what I did. I moved all of my stuff, took all of my stuff on the ferry with me, um, met Freddie. Like, actually, he came to the ferry, and um, we always joke every time we go to the ferry port, like, we're like, oh, this is the first person that we met, you know, da, 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 da. and um, so yeah, I had me and all my bags, and you know, went and lived with his family, and the rest is history, basically. That's beautiful. We fell in love. Fell in love, yeah. and now you guys are married, and they have a beautiful yes. daughter. Yes. Just beautiful, and this goes back to just, again, being open-minded. Yeah. Because yes. if you were in the States, you probably would have been like, oh, oh that's creepy as hell, like, yeah. why are you... I don't, know say, you, I, don't, right. I don't know you like that, you know what I'm saying? But you came out here with such an open mind, mm-hmm. yeah. and it led you to your husband. Girl, it really did. An amazing man. Oh my God, an Ooh. amazing man. For real. <laughs> that's my, that's, that's my twin flame. For real, for real. That is so beautiful, and mm-hmm. this is why I'm saying. Like, I feel like, to be honest, a lot of people block their own blessings. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. They block their own blessings and then they blame society or blame the world as to why things are not happening right. for them. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's a prime example as to being open minded. Right. I remember even just with Hope and I, when when I think we were going on our first date or something like that, he's like, hey, so where do you live? I'm going to come pick you up. Mm-hmm. And I remember having that I, I moment like, excuse me? Like, what you mean where I live? You want to come pick me up? Like, he's yeah. like, oh, yeah, to kill me, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like, yeah. Yeah, but. And I was just like, that man, be open minded. And yeah. he came, picked me up, came back, dropped me off, and that was it. Mm-hmm. And it was just because he was raised to be a gentleman like that. Right. Do you understand right. what I'm saying? Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's just, it's a cultural thing that later on I was like, I was impressed. I was like, wow, I felt like I felt like yes. a queen. You know what I'm saying? Like I felt yes. like a queen. Like he wasn't like, all right, I'm about to drop you off on this corner, find your way. Right. You know, like, yeah, he yeah. made sure I it wasn't just a text, hey did you get home? Like he made sure he dropped me off in front of my doorstep mm-hmm. and came back, brought me back home in front of my doorstep and didn't expect anything in return. See? Just straight up just pure gentleman. Mm-hmm. And that's just the society out here. That's just the culture out here. And it's so beautiful. It's so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So now that you've been out here for such a long time, what would you say are some challenges that you faced? The first and the biggest challenge is absolutely the language barrier, yeah. you guys. I've been out here almost five years, like I said, and the amount of Kiswahili that I know is very embarrassing. Like, I, <laughs> like I, feel, I feel like if I could put a percentage on it, it's like... 38 to 40 percent proficiency in Kiswahili you know what I'm saying but, but it's then, hard it's, it's hard 
it is a difficult language to learn. Like people say it's easy, but it's only easy because you pronounce it how you spell it. And that's it. There's nothing that can link like, you know what I'm saying, a, 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 a Latin base, you know what I'm saying, uh, like a Latin speaking, not Latin speaking, but you know what I'm saying, like yeah. la- language. Like it's easy for Americans or English speaking people to learn Spanish because it has a Latin base. Easy to learn French, Latin base. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But to learn Kiswahili, a Bantu language, where yeah, and forget tribal languages, they be having <laughs> clicks and all types of stuff. So, <laughs> for real, it's hard, man. It's hard. So like, you know. Um, but then I get jealous at the people who come out here. We were just talking about yeah, this earlier today. Yeah, we just today. talking about that. They come yeah. out here for six months and know the language. Like, ba da 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 And I'm just like, okay, yeah, mm-hmm. whatever. So how has your daughter taken to the language? Oh, she speaks both. She See? speaks both, yeah. Because kids are like sponges, you mm-hmm. know? And she grew up with knowing both languages, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. like yep. So that's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. So if yeah. you guys are worried about your children learning key Swahili, understand children are like sponges. They will know before you do. Like, yes. for real, for real. She teaches me words. Yeah. She really teaches me words. For real. <laughs> she's three. Like, yeah. I'm like, hmm. Have you felt safe here? Yes, I absolutely do feel safe here. Um, what can I say? I still I still take precautions, you know what I'm always. saying? Just how I grew up. Like, you just, you always have to watch your back. But I, I do feel safe here, you guys. And, you know, for, for the other people who are out there who... Let me, okay, let me put it like this. You hear that this is a safe country, so you out here all willy-nilly or yeah. willy in the wind, as my mm-hmm. grandpa used to say, and, you know. You don't you use just, street smartness. Yeah, and, you know, you really have to have a level of street smartness. Absolutely. You have to have. That's some, anywhere. Mm-hmm. Even when I'm in Brooklyn, I have to have my street smartness. I need to see if somebody's following me. I need to see, you know, make sure that the cab driver is taking me where I need to go. Like, right. I always have street smartness. That. Doesn't, it don't matter how safe the country is. Right. You always have to have, it's just, it's survival, it's protection. Yeah, and then people come out here and completely bash the whole country because you got mm-hmm. um, ripped off, like, what, a thousand T-shilling in a cab, or you got your phone stolen, or you got your wallet mm-hmm. stolen. I tell that people, happens everywhere. Yeah, I tell people I have been robbed three times in Brooklyn. One was at gunpoint, one I got punched in the face, and the other was pickpocketed. In mm-hmm. my city, in my town, where yeah. I live. How many times you got robbed here? None. Okay. I haven't been robbed not one time here. <laughs> so yeah. it's just, you know, it happens everywhere, you guys. So, like, and I find that those people who that happens to, you know what I'm saying, they're just not thinking or they're not being self-aware or aware yeah. of their surroundings. And, and one of them, let me tell you this, mm-hmm. don't laugh at me. One of them was in front of my house. Yeah. And it was by like a 14 year old boy. Damn. Small he kid. He must have had a gun, did he? It was he nah, he didn't have gun? a gun. He was the one who punched me. Damn. Because I was on the phone in front of my house and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I'm just playing this in my head like, yeah, girl, da da da. Wow. Across your head. <laughs> I was on the phone. Oh my god! And this kid in a uniform and everything came up to me. And was like, "Hi, can I have the time?" And I was like, "Yes." Yeah. So I looked down. And <laughs> just didn't sit down. He, he was in a school Red uniform. Red school uniform. Dang. We wind up catching him, and then you know the police arrested him and stuff. And he like peed on himself. He was so scared. Oh my god! And Poor baby. I didn't press charges on him, yeah. but I was like, "This is a lesson learned. This is where you're gonna end up if you continue to do things right. like this." Uh, but wow. yeah, it was a 14 year old small little boy. He, and it hurt. <laughs> Yo, I know. I've been punching the face before. It hurts. It hurts. Yeah. So, oh what can I do? Should I move? My, should I move out, out of my house and be like, that's it? I'm leaving. Right. Because, you know what I'm saying? Come like, on, this is not gonna work. You know. So it happens, and you have to. I should have been. I mean, now if you ask me what time it is, I'm gonna tell you. I learned my lesson. I'll, well, I'll show you what time it is. <laughs> Right. I learned my lesson. Like, sorry, I don't have the time. I ain't pulling out my phone. Right. Um, I was a little traumatized after that. I was like, I ain't giving nobody the time. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, just being aware. If I was aware of my surrounding, then, you know, and I, I was paying attention mm-hmm. to his intention, then I probably could have probably avoided that situation or whatever. But it happens. And being self-aware is so important. Right. And have you gone out at night? Yeah. And you felt safe? Yeah, I've gone out by myself at night. And yeah, I felt, I felt safe, safe, but it's I felt safe, but it was 
still just in the back of my mind because I always, you know, just watch my surroundings. Watch your surroundings. You know absolutely. Like, Abs- absolutely. I cannot agree yep. with you anymore. But I've, I've definitely felt safe, you know what I'm saying? But not like how I felt in the States where I feel like, okay, if I'm walking by myself, is a cop going to roll up and think that I just robbed somebody mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever the case may be. And you already mm-hmm. know the, yeah. that fate if a it's cop rolls up on you. It's true. So if somebody's watching you right now and says, wow, I really want to come out there to Tanzania. Sounds like such a wonderful place. What advice would you give them? Make sure that um, you're you're wanting to come out because it's something that resonates within you Mm. about the place, not how people are making it look. Where are these Mm. spots coming from? Um, (laughs) But because, you know, in this day and age, social media, we mm-hmm. we tend to glamorize things, and we have um, not like not we as in putting myself in this box, right? But me as but I, we as a community, as a community, yeah, you know, as a people, like um, you know, things are easily glamorized, and you can easily make something look so much larger yeah. than life, and so so more so much more appealing than it really is. You know what I'm saying? So just try not to get suckered into that. You know what I'm saying? Look for the real experiences, the good, bad, and ugly, you know, um, you know, and, and don't just take one person's experience for, like, that's how it is, that's how it's going to be. Yeah. Um, get different perspectives, get mm-hmm. hers, get mine, get all these other people's, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, perspective, try to do consultations, try to do more research, um, you know, but, but mainly make sure that this place resonates with you, don't, yeah. don't buy into the hype of any place. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even though I do cake for Tanzania a lot, but like just don't yeah. don't buy into it. Come and do your first of all, do your own research and then make sure it sits right within you your and within spirit. your spirit. Mm-hmm. Alright, so yeah. my final question would be what would be your favorite two moments in Tanzania besides giving birth and getting married? Yeah, okay. Well, I actually gave birth in the States. Yes. But favorite two moments in Tanzania or places that you like you're just like this I, is I just I have mo- this I is. do I have it so I would say one of the moments is when I was in Keegan Boney and I was kind of trying to teach Freddie how to swim this is before we were even dating mm-hmm. I was trying to teach him how to swim and I'm just like for a moment you know you have those moments of just like Presence where you're yeah. just fully present. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And like, this and is it. Yeah, and I'm I'm literally like just kind of floating in the water uh-huh. and realizing like it hit me like yo you're in the Indian Ocean or the East African Ocean and like you're here. Yes, you're here. Yes, like you're you're actually here in this beautiful clear water mm-hmm. with good company, good energy, you don't, you're not worried about anything, Nothing. you know what I'm saying, like, like your mind just goes clear, yeah, here, and it was I'm beautiful, here. it was like sunsetty and all like cool, you know what I'm saying, it was just beautiful, and then another moment was when, and we were just talking about this off camera, but like how I was, um, when I went to Moshi for the first time, because that's where my husband's family is um, from or whatever, Freddie had me hiking, okay? <laughs> Literally hiking in some like flip floppy leather target sandals like that were already falling apart before the hike. And you know, a hike to them is not a hike to us. No. You know what I'm saying? So no. he had me hiking and I was mad. I was mad. I was like, this so and so got me hiking all the way up Mount Kilimanjaro on these daggone flip flops. Didn't even prepare me. Yeah, didn't, didn't, didn't get prepare the right me. shoes. And then he got me some food. So I calmed down a little bit. <laughs> and then, you know, then I was able to enjoy the hike. And yeah. I really took it all in after yeah. that. I was taking everything in. I was looking at the, the color of the soil. And then I saw a waterfall off in the distance. Mm. And just breathing that mountain air and seeing yes. the stream run by. It was hot outside, but the stream was so cold because it was like melted ice from the, the mm. top of Mount Kilimanjaro just running by, just clear. Just you hear the birds, you can smell the flowers in the mm. air. Ugh. It's yeah. beautiful. One of the things that I will say, because you just mentioned something, is I actually have a lot of breathing problems um, because my nose is actually broken, mm-hmm. and the way it's positioned, it, it's hard for me to breathe. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I haven't had any breathing problems since I've been in Tanzania. Wow. And even when I go See? back to the States, I still have that breathing issue.
issue that I have. I tend, I tend to breathe like I'm like 600 pounds, mm -hmm. like this, like because it's really difficult for me to breathe. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you notice, but right here it's broken. Mm -hmm. And when I'm out here, I just like I can just breathe mm -hmm. so good, like so See? good. And I think maybe it's the pollution. Like it this, is. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like it's just beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for coming here, telling your story. So Why don't you tell everybody where they can find you? Okay, you guys can find me on YouTube as Traveling Sister, S-I-S-T-A. Um, you can find me on Instagram at, at traveling.sista. You can go to travelingsister.com as well. Um, and, yeah, that's it. And so, if somebody wants to purchase wood from you, where would they go? You would go, okay, so... I'll have to send you the, the yep. link to the, um, the, the website website and everything. Um, it's the, the website's under construction, but we do have a, a very simple website where you can contact us. And I'll Instagram. Give, yeah, and an Instagram, Sauka Woodworks, S-A-U-K-A, -A, 